So that's the spine of the scapula. Supraspinatus, infraspinatus. What is supply? What supplies those muscles? Very good. Where do they come? Where does it come from? From the first uh, trunk. Very good. From the upper trunk. From the upper trunk, you also have something called the suprascapular nerve. The suprascapular nerve supplies the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus. Okay. Um, sorry, Johnny. One more time, please. Just turn on to that. Okay, so that, that, that's uh, supraspinatus, infraspinatus. Okay, um, that's the edge of the scapula. What muscles are these? Teres minor and teres major. Okay, so teres minor is uh, uh, minor is up there. Teres major is up here. Okay, nerve supply to teres minor. Very good. Teres minor is by axillary and teres major is by lower subscapular. Okay. So the lower subscapular one minute. The lower subscapular nerve supplies subscapularis as well as teres major. Axillary nerve supplies deltoid as well as teres minor. Okay. And then you have radial nerve. So the radial nerve supplies. Uh, the tri triceps I said. So the radial nerve, uh, that's, you know, you can see the spiral groove in him quite nicely. So that's a spiral groove. Um, comes down. That's the brachioradialis. If you reflect the break in, in the cubital fossa, if you reflect the brachioradialis, you'll see the radial nerve there. Okay. Then it lies between the two heads of the supinator muscle. It runs between the two heads of the supinator there, just turn, turn towards some for a minute. And about seven centimeters distal to the joint line, it divides into what? Post interosseous nerve. nerve and superficial branch of the radial nerve. Okay, so at this point, it divides into a posterior interosseous nerve, which is a deep branch similar to your anterior interosseous nerve, which is also a deep branch. And then you have the cutaneous nerve, which is called the uh, um, superficial branch of the radial nerve. That's what you're testing for sensation. Okay. Now, post interosseous nerve. Nerve injuries, you will get a full EMQ on nerve injuries. So the favorite questions are related to levels of nerve injuries. Imagine your radial nerve is injured at this level, <coughs> above the spiral groove, then the entire extensor aspect is paralyzed, quite obvious. If it is below the spiral groove, triceps is spared. Okay, so the patient will have extension of the elbow, but wrist drop below the spiral groove. Okay, let's go slightly lower down. At this level, what muscles are spared? Triceps is spared, fine. Anything else? Which one? Brachioradialis is spared because the brachioradialis is supplied earlier than that. Then you have the anconius, which will be spared. You probably will also have the extensor carpi radialis longus and the brevis, which extends the wrist this way. That is also spared. When you come down, the posterior, before it gives you the posterior interosseous nerve at this level, always the extensor carpi radialis longus extensor copper radialis brevis, anconius, supinator, and brachioradialis. They're always supplied. So if the patient has got a posterior interosseous nerve injury following a laceration, patient will still be able, patient won't have a wrist drop. Patient will be able to lift the wrist up, but there is loss of extension of the fingers. Okay, so if you get a clinical scenario whereby they have all these different nerves, and then the question says, patient is able to extend the wrist, but not the fingers. Which nerve is it? It's not the post interosseous nerve. Okay, it's a post interosseous nerve. Um, and the question will be a bit more specific. It will say the patient is able to extend the wrist, but with a radial deviation. Because only the extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis is working, not the extensor carpi ulnaris. 
So the, when the patient extends the wrist, they say the, it radially deviates. Because when you're extending the wrist, the, you have the extensor carpi radial is on the radial side, and the extensor carpi ulnar is on the ulnar side working to extend it. So if posterior interosseous nerve is injured, the extensor carpi ulnar is affected, but not the radialis. So the patient can do this, but it will deviate to the radial side. Okay. Staying on the radial nerve, it supplies all the other muscles uh, in the hand. The thumb, what they're going to ask you, you should clearly know the names, extensor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis, and then you have the abductor pollicis longus in the base of the snuff box. Then to the digits, you should know the names, extensor digitorum communis, extensor indices, and extensor digiti minimi. Okay? So the, um, there's not really an EMP question on that, but you can get a question on the snuff box boundaries and contents of the snuff box. Um, boundaries of the snuff box? EPL. Yeah, very good. On which, which side? <coughs> um, on the ulnar side. Ulnar side? On the ulnar side, you have the extensor pollicis longus. And then there's EPB on the Ex side. Extensor pollicis brevis and? Um, I can't remember. Abductor pollicis longus. So two longus and one brevis. On the ulnar side, this one, lift the thumb up for me, please. Yeah, yeah, just lift the thumb up, 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 yeah, very good. See, that's it. So th that's your extensor pollicis longus on the ulnar side. That's extensor pollicis brevis. And then here is the abductor pollicis longus, which abducts the thumb. So those are the boundaries of the snuff box. Okay, what, what are the important structures here? Uh, out of the snuff box. So superficial branch of the radial nerve. Radial artery. Radial artery is deep. Okay, radial artery is deep. And cephalic vein. Cephalic vein. There in the snuff box. Okay, what are the bony prominences you can feel in the snuff box? If you feel your snuff box, clearly you, you'll feel your scaphoid. What else can you feel? Living? No. Trapezium. Trapezium. Scaphoid, trapezium, four bones. Scaphoid, trapezium, anything else? Base of the fist metacarpal and the radial styloid. Okay, the, the, these are the four bones uh, in the snuff box. That's the radial styloid. That's clusters in the snuff box, is it? Yeah, that, that is because if you look at um, the anatomical specimen, the, the radial ten, the, these tendons lie on the, on, on, on the sides. Okay, so the, the, that's a, a snuff box. Right. Um, so that's all about the radial nerve. Now if I go back here, lift your arm to the sides, please. That's your teres minor. Where does the teres minor insert? Greater tuberosity of the humerus. Okay, what else inserts along with the teres minor in the great? Oh, Supraspinatus. Very good, so supraspinatus. Infraspinatus, teres minor. minor yeah. So the, the rotator cuff muscles. Yeah. So SITS, S-I-T-S. Supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor. They are attached to the greater tu 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 tubercle. And the subscapularis is attached to the lesser tubercle. Because th those are the rotator cuff muscles. So that's the teres ma uh, minor. Uh, sorry, th this is a teres minor. Where does the teres major insert? Think about it, I'm sure you know this. If you, if you can see the arm, the teres major coming from there, where does it, ha where, does it where, where can it insert? Think about it. It has to be in the shaft of the humerus. Where else can it go to? It has to be, isn't it? Because the, if it is not going to the shoulder, it has to be coming here. So it uh, attaches, it at, in, inserts into the, the medial lip of the bicipital groove of the humerus. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to USMLE standards. And the very best, 
you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.